Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. It's great to have your company. Well, after a, a week of a bit humid weather and the rain and hot weather, we enjoy the nice cool breeze of this morning. Um, if you're a visitor, it's good to have your company this morning. Everybody's welcome to join in with a cuppa and some fellowship over at the hall after service. Now Barry will be leading us in worship this morning. Now we wish him all the best and as we begin our worship, I invite you to join me in prayer. Dear Lord God, Heavenly Father, as we begin our worship to you, we thank you for this special time to be gathered in your presence, where you remind and re reassure us of your gifts, love, grace and mercy that you so freely offer to us all. We worship you with thankful hearts, giving you the praise and the glory because you are our sovereign God who loves us. You have chosen us right from the beginning. Give us faith for us to follow you. We pray for Barry leading us in worship this morning. Uphold, bless and guide him as he shares and encourages us with the message of salvation, your love. We pray, lift us up, give us joy in our hearts for us to love one another. In, in Jesus' name, our Lord and Saviour, we pray. Amen. <coughs> The Lord says, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing the first hymn, O Spirit of Living God. Friends in Christ, 
Let us confess our sins to God our Father and ask him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to forgive us. We confess that we are born in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word and deed. For what we have done, for what we have done to do, we have not loved you with our whole heart. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy on us and has given his only Son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in his name, he has given the right to become children of God and has given them his Holy Spirit. Whoever believes and is baptised will be saved. Grant this Lord to us all. Amen. We read responsibly from, responsibly from Psalm 71. In you, O Lord, I take refuge. In your righteousness, deliver me and rescue me. Be to me a rock of refuge, a strong fortress to save me. Rescue me, O God, from the hand of the wicked, from the grasp of the unjust and cruel. For you, O Lord, are my hope. I trust, O Lord, upon you. I have leaned. I have leaned from my birth. Glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forevermore. Amen. So let us pray for the gift of love. Ever-loving God, we thank you that you have sent the Son to our life, and through him we have Teach us this The first reading comes from Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 4 to 10. God appoints Jeremiah as a prophet to the nations. Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, and before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Ah, Lord God, truly I do not know how to speak for I am only a boy. But the Lord said to me, Do not say, I am only a boy, for you shall go to all to whom I send you, and you shall speak whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Now I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over nations and over kingdoms to pluck up and to pull down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1 to 13. The way of love. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, 
I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror, dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope and love abide, these three, and the greatest of these is love. This is the word of the Lord. The Gospel reading for today is from Luke chapter 4, verses 21 to 30. Jesus is rejected by his own home, by his hometown. Then Jesus began to say to the people in the synagogue at Nazareth, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They said, Is not this Joseph's son? He said to them, Doubtless you will quote to me this proverb, Doctor, cure yourself. And you will say, Do hear also in your hometown the things that we have heard you did in Capernaum. And he said, Truly I tell you, no prophet is accepted in the prophet's hometown. But the truth is, there were many widows in Israel in the time of Elijah, when the heaven was shut up for three years and six months. And there was a severe famine over all the land. Yet Elijah was sent to none of them, except to a widow at Zarephath in Sidon. There were also many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha, and none of them was cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. When they heard this, all in the synagogue were filled with rage. They got up, drove him out of the town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built so that they might hurl him over the cliff. But he passed through the midst of them and went on his way. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Lord Jesus, thank you for teaching the Christ's authority. Lead us to accept your message of God's love. Amen. We sing the next hymn, One Family.
The text for today is from uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1 to 8. Imagine you're travelling on a train. You and your fellow passengers are quietly reading a novel or a newspaper, enjoying the peace and quiet. Suddenly, at a station, a father and his children enter your compartment. The children are boisterous. They are yelling back and forth, throwing things, even grabbing people's newspapers. It would be difficult to not be irritated, wouldn't it? This actually happened to author Stephen Covey. He decided to ask the father to control his children. The father replied, I guess I should do something about it. But we just came from the hospital where the mother had died about an hour ago. I don't know what to think and I guess they don't know how to handle it either. And on hearing those words, everything changed for Stephen. He saw, felt and behaved differently. His irritation va vanishing in an instant. Love welled up for those children instead. Oh, I'm so sorry. Can you tell me about it? What can I do to help? And so love triumphed over anger and being loving wasn't so difficult. Love doesn't always come easily. People try our patience and rub us the wrong way. The primary word for love in the New Testament is far removed from the sentimental ideas of love we hear over the radio or television. The modern view of love expects a lot from others and seeks a big return on itself. Many of our modern songs focus on the self and its needs and desires. They speak more of being loved than of loving someone who's unlovable. The view of love expressed in the New Testament is other-centred, wanting only to put the other person and their needs first. Charity, with its emphasis on giving rather than receiving, and on sacrificing or surrendering something that is ours, better conveys what the New Testament means about love. So Paul uses 15 verbs to describe how love acts, both positively and negatively. Our Lord's spokesman shows us that love doesn't mean anything goes. There are actions love will not indulge in. There are many ways of behaving badly and love says an emphatic no to all of them. Love is no excuse for exploiting anyone else for personal gain. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. Love does not insist on its own way. But aren't many of us so often tempted to want everything our own way? Some people even resort to blackmail or offer veiled threats if they don't get their own way. One of our film stars used to sing about I did it my way. Nothing could be further from the New Testament way of love. Love will set aside its own plans and entitlements for the good and welfare of another person. Love gives others the benefit of the doubt because it never assumes the worst is true. True love always puts the best construction on the other person's actions. Love covers a multitude of sins. It constantly looks for new ways to affirm praise and encourage those nearest to it each day. It is not self-seeking and is not interested in self promotion. Love is like elastic, 
full of flexibility, give and take. God loves a cheerful giver. Not only those who give cheerfully to him and his church, but also those who are generous to others. Those who have found that there's more blessing in giving than in receiving. Love doesn't focus on its own gain. Comfort or success at anyone else's expense. It knows that there's no greater happiness than in making someone else happy. Love doesn't hang on to resentments while listening to sermons on love. It wants to let the sermon affect everything that happens outside of worship. Those who feel miserable need to see that feeling miserable is a sign that they are not spending sufficient time showing love to someone else. Love doesn't wait to be asked to help. It delights in taking the initiative. Love is patient. Love puts up with a lot from others. Because our Lord Jesus has shown us endless patience. Love is composed and steady when tested, slow to anger. Love wins its victories through patience. Our Lord places people who try our patience in our lives so that our patience will deepen. Christians practising patience either speak the truth in love to others or they pray for God to bless the person that they are angry with. Love can wait. It possesses staying power and gives the person more time. This is hard for our society that has made a God of speed and wants immediate change. We need to acknowledge that the problems usually lie within, within ourselves. I won't grow in love until I acknowledge that. If I want friends, I must be friendly to others. If I want to be loved, it must begin by showing unconditional love for love is kind. The atheist philosopher Frederick Nietzsche hated the New Testament for encouraging kindness. He detest detested the way Christians seemed to waste time and energy on lepers, cripples and the disabled. Such kindness, Nietzsche believed, weakened the strength of the human race. How wrong he was. Kindness isn't weakness. It's a power that moves us to support and help someone who can offer nothing in return. Kindness treats well those who have treated us poorly. It measures its gain by what it gives. Christians who are kind are sensitive and understanding and so make others feel at ease. Kindness is love's readiness to enhance the life of another person. We can never be too kind. Instead, love bears all things. What a breathtaking claim. Many who have cared for a sick spouse or child over many years have seen it as a privilege to devote a lifetime of care to someone they love. Caring for a disabled loved one so often creates more love, more compassion and understanding for other people. Love leads us to do things for others that they cannot do for themselves. The miracles of love continue to surprise us and are cause for rejoicing. Chi Ping was a new Christian who was beginning to learn the meaning of Christ's love. He was travelling on an overcrowded train 
when a drunken, derelict, hereditary seat. Chi Ming leaned as close to the train window as possible. The drunk stank as if he hadn't bathed for years. The Chi Ping held himself tightly, fearing that if he touched the derelict, the stench would cling to him. But as he pulled away, he was overcome by the fact that he should love this man too. He thought about Christ's love for lepers. He prayed that God would fill him with a Christ-like love for this man who had invaded his piety with a real need. Chi Ping described how contrary to his emotions he felt his arm being raised and to his great surprise found himself putting it around the man's shoulders and drawing him close. The derelict wept as he received Chi Ping's expression of love. Chi Ping did what he wouldn't have desired to do because willing to be loving, he prayed that Jesus would create love in him for that man. For the love of Christ urges us on because we are convinced that one has died for all. Therefore, all have died. And he died for all so that those who live might live no longer for themselves but for him who died and was raised for them. The description of love in 1 Corinthians verse 13 is beyond what any of us could achieve on our own without Christ's help. This portrait of love is based on what Christ is like. Christ is patient and he is kind. He isn't envious, boastful or arrogant or rude. Jesus didn't insist on his own way. He bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Christ's love for us never ends. The more we know about Jesus Christ, the more we will learn about love. Jesus is love incarnate. Rather than just saying, I love you, our Lord in holy communion gives himself to us in an act of love. Rather than just speaking about love, Jesus shows love to the loveless and the unlovable. We are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ's love for us. Nothing can separate us from his love. Our Lord treats us better than we deserve. His undeserved love enables us to treat each other better than we deserve. We now look on those who irritate and annoy us as those who are also loved by Christ and for whom he has died. Christ's love liberates us from all the limits we place on our love. When our love is free of limits, we will be surprised how much more love our Lord gives for others. So let this love reign supreme in our lives. Amen. So we stand for the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand. be seated as we sing the next hymn.
Love is patient and kind. We pray the offering prayer. Eternal God, make us ready to serve you. In faith, hope, and love. Let us come before God our Father and present our needs to him in prayer. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we give you thanks with all our heart for your holy gospel which you have given us and through which we have come to know your fatherly heart. For the sake of your boundless mercy, graciously preserve the blessed light of your word for us. Lead and guide our hearts that we never depart from your word, but always walk in its light, and so finally be saved. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Remember, O oh Lord, your church. Deliver her from all evil, and perfect her in your love. Strengthen and protect her by your word and sacraments. Grow your church, so that your gospel may be preached to all nations and gather the faithful from throughout the world into the kingdom which you have prepared. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Almighty God, you bless the earth to make it fruitful, bringing forth in abundance whatever is needed for the support of our lives. We pray that you would graciously provide us with favourable weather in the year ahead, so that we may gather in the fruits of the earth and proclaim your goodness with thanksgiving. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, eternal ruler of all, keep this nation under your care. Bless the leaders of our land, that we may be a people at peace among ourselves and a blessing to the other nations of the earth. Help us provide trustworthy leaders, contribute to wise decisions, for the general welfare of our people and thus serve you faithfully in our generation to the honour of your holy name. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty God, as you brought the Apostle Peter out of prison, have mercy on all who are unjustly imprisoned and set them free from their bonds so that they may rejoice in your deliverance Grant to all prisoners 
a fair and honest trial, and grant that the prison system of our land works for restoration and rehabilitation. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful God, since you minister to all who are afflicted, look with compassion on those who through addiction have lost their health and freedom. Restore to them the assurance of your unfailing mercy. Unfailing mercy. Remove the fears that attack them. Strengthen them in the recovery of their self-possession and health. And give skill, patience and understanding love to those who provide care for them. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, you formed us in the womb, and before we were born, you pre predestined us to your own. To your own. So keep us in your love, and strengthen our faith and our hope. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. In the name of the power and the glory of yours, now and forever. Amen. So the Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face shine on us and be gracious to us. The Lord look upon us with favour and give us peace. Amen. So let us go in peace and love one another. In the name of Christ. Amen. So we sing the final song, Send Your Servant.